to welcome you to the Consulate General of India and the International Ahimsa Foundation's 2,620th birth anniversary for Laura Mahavir, otherwise known as the Mahavir Janvi Kalyanak. We invite you to celebrate nonviolence and the messages of Lord Mahavir today. I am the Youth Director for the International Ahimsa Foundation and it is my pleasure to welcome you all. Please allow me to introduce our wonderful MC, Aditi Lamba. Aditi Lamba is a New York-based South Asian TV anchor, producer, and reporter. Aditi has represented the voice of minorities and communities of color, their identities, achievements, and representation. She is an experienced news and entertainment content producer and writer with a record of handling live shows and interviews highlighting issues that matter. She has produced special productions featuring US congressional representatives, Bollywood and Hollywood celebrities, South Asian American artists and leaders such as Priyanka Chopra Jonas, Jay Sean, New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy, and New York City Mayor Eric Adams. She is extremely proud of her Indian heritage and hopes to bring a stronger South Asian perspective to the greater American media industry. She feels that newsrooms should present more diversity and inclusivity, and that South Asian Americans get an equal and fair platform. Today, Aditi is very excited to be a part of this event celebrating the importance of peace and nonviolence with everyone here. Please welcome our MC, Aditi Lamba. Thank you so much for that warm welcome. Hello everyone, how's everyone doing today? Well, I like that, very enthusiastic. Well, it's great to be here today. This is the 10th anniversary of the International Ahimsa Foundation. And we're so excited to have a house full, so let's give it a round of applause. I'm very honored to be your MC for this afternoon, and we hope that you have a lot of amazing time here celebrating peace and nonviolence, a very integral part of Lord Mahavira's message. So let's begin today this event with the American National Anthem, which will be followed by the Indian National Anthem. The American National Anthem will be sung by Michelle Delafay. She became a familiar face to millions of television viewers, singing and dancing each week on Dean Martin's widely successful NBC television series. Those programs gave her the opportunity to work alongside some of the most famous legends in the history of show business, such as Frank Sinatra, Bing Crosby, Lena Horne, Jimmy Stewart, Orson Welles, and more. She is a soloist at the St. Mark's Church in the Bowery in New York City and dedicates her time and singing to work for the UN and World Peace Organization. Please welcome on the stage, Michelle Delafay. I'm honored to be here. Could everyone please rise?
beautiful way to start off the event. I'd now like to invite on stage Dr. Smita Zua, who will be singing the Indian National Anthem. Dr. Gua is a professor and a vocalist, and she's a faculty at St. John's University in the area of education. As a singer, she has been singing since she was three years old and has been performing in India and the United States. She has also performed with the famous icon, Mr. Buffy Larry. Please welcome on stage, Smita Zua. I'll sing the international anthem. Please welcome on the stage Dr. Jyotna Jain. Jai Jinem, and a very good morning to all. We are still a little away from good afternoon. So at this point, I would like to invite our Council General, Ambassador Lee Jaiswalji, for lamp lighting, Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney, DCG uh, Nidza from Israeli Consulate, uh, Shimi Perman, Dr. Sudhir Parekh, our board members of IAF. We have a new uh, board of director, Dr. Ravindra Goyal, uh, Mr. Rajiv Khandia, Amar Jyoti ji is also our new VP for our organization, and all three honorees. Please join us for this auspicious ceremony. All three honorees, please join us. While we will be lighting the lamp, Dr. Jyotsna Jain will be singing Manglashtar. Please everyone rise and fold your hands and join me. Thank you. 
a beautiful ceremony. You know, there's just something so peaceful to start it all, lighting the lamp. And we're so grateful to all of you for being here with us during this process. Let's now move on. We have a couple of speech addresses for some data series this afternoon. So let's go ahead and invite on stage Dr. Nita Jain. On January 21st, 2017, Dr. Nita Jain was sworn in as an Indian female district leader for Assembly District 25th, Part B of Queens. She has a long history of serving the community, both socially and politically. Her core values of humanity and peace have fueled her passion to serve. Dr. Jen founded the International Himsa Foundation in 2012, which is a domestic nonprofit from Manhattan. As the president and founder, she works to promote the study and practice of nonviolence and peace in education institutes. She has also been a recipient of prestigious awards and honors from various community and political organizations, such as she was recognized by city and state as Power of Diversity 100 Asians for her work of promoting nonviolence and peace, and for empowering women by the Society of Foreign Consulates in New York, and Bharati Pravasi Divas NRI Award by the Indian Consulate, and Women Empowerment Award by New York City Council. What an achievement. Let's welcome on the stage Dr. Nita Jain. Once again, Jai Jinin, and a very good afternoon to all. It is my utmost pleasure and honor to welcome all of you to India Home, the Consulate, for celebrating very important message of Lord Mahavi, which is nonviolence and peace. Before I go further, I would like to thank Council General of India, Ambassador Lee Jaiswalji, for hosting this beautiful event with our organization. As you just heard, this, this organization is celebrating its 10th anniversary. It was founded in 2012 when we have started seeing a lot of negative things is happening in the school culture. And that really broke my heart when the first child in New Jersey, a middle school child, to commit suicide because of the bullying. From that day till today, our organization is pledged to promote nonviolence and peace, specifically in school culture. We have a beautiful board who work day and night with us. As this is the 10th anniversary of our organization, we have changed our program a little bit. We never honored anyone before, but this is Ahimsa Devas. Ahimsa is a Sanskrit word for nonviolence. And nonviolence, where it began from, I just want to give you a small synopsis of it because we have a long list of dignitaries speaking after me. So nonviolence, the word Ahimsa was given by Lord Mahavira, who was the 24th and the last week Dankar of Jain spiritual leaders. He was born in 599 BC. This year, we are celebrating his 2000 620th birth anniversary. And I'm very honored to have my friend, longtime friend, Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney, who really shared this vision with our community. And she never missed our event of this nonviolence, including our float in India Day Parade in August. She's always there. Lord Mahavira gave us five basic principles which has more relevance in today's world than ever. And what are those five principles? As you see this beautiful banner here, the five basic principles were non-violence, truthfulness, self-control, non-possessiveness, and the non-violence was the most important principle of him. He said, ahimsa karma dharma means 
नॉन वायलेंस इज द सुप्रीम रिलीजन नॉन वायलेंस इज द सुप्रीम धर्म इफ यू फॉलो नॉन वायलेंस इफ यू ऑल फॉलो नॉन वायलेंस अहिंसा इन आवर डेली लाइफ दे विल बी नो वायलेंस अराउंड एस एंड दैट्स वॉट आवर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन डू वी डू लॉट ऑफ एक्टिविटीज इन स्कूल्स एज ए आफ्टर स्कूल एक्टिविटी ऑन नॉन वायलेंस एंड पीस we do activities as a conflict resolution through non violence as you know violence doesn't have to be only physical it is a it is it starts from your mind the minute you think of harming someone the non the violence starts there so violence is in your thoughts violence can be in your action and violence can be in your words so we have to be very careful when we use these three things in our daily life how we process our thoughts how we speak and how our actions affect other people's life so our children of international aims of foundation they participate every year in peace of the park peace in the park which we do in central park in july this year we are going to do on july 29 we are lot of like minded organizations who believe in non violence and peace they come together and we do the whole day event and you are all invited it's open for the public we do lot of things to change in kids mind in schools while we do these activities a very simple example we prepare lunch boxes in schools with these children and they put a small note in these lunch boxes based on their thoughts of non violence and peace and then we deliver these to the needy people so that's how we try to change the thought process of our young generation because they are our future and i'm so happy and glad to see all of you joining in this mission and we are going to go further till we really bring our society in peace and harmony so here i'm going to start and we are going to show a video clip of our past activities during this 10 years so can you please play the video
Lord Mahavira introduced us to the nonviolence, but nonviolence was adopted and practiced by Mahatma Gandhi, father of the nation. And he took this tool to get India's independence. Our independence came to us through a nonviolence movement, which was further followed by Martin Luther King Jr. for his civil rights movement and Nelson Mandela. So we are here now. We have to pledge to ourselves to take this further, to take it to our communities, to take it to our next generation, and tell them how important it is to practice nonviolence. Once again, welcome to all, and thank you so much for being here. And I want to congratulate our all three honorees for today, right now, Professor Jeffrey Long, Dr. Subhash Jain, and Haridas Kotawala. I call him Ankar, so we call this one Haridas Ankar. So thank you once again, and I'm going to give it to you, Aditi Lama. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jain. Moving on to the dignitaries for this afternoon. We have now a very important member of the conflict, Honorable Consul General Ranveer Jaiswal, a career diplomat who joined the Indian Foreign Service in 1998. Consul General Ranveer Jaiswal has served in Portugal, Cuba, South Africa, and the permanent mission of India in New York. He served in New Delhi at the Ministry of External Affairs, first as Deputy Secretary looking after India's relations with the United States of America, and then as Joint Secretary managing India's relations with Western European countries. In the middle of 2017, he was deputed to serve as the President of India, to the President of India as the Joint Secretary managing his international relations portfolio. Please welcome to the stage one of the strongest supporters of the Indian community here. We have with us Honorable Randhi Jaiswal.
and realize how important it is for social progress, for social harmony, and for the world, for the world to move on. So let us come together to celebrate the Hinsa. Let us walk on the path shown by Lord Mahavi so that we can build a better today and a better tomorrow for all of us. Thank you once again, Dr. Nita Jain, for this beautiful function. I must recognize the friends of my dear colleague, the Deputy Consul General of Israel, great friend of India, our distinguished political leaders and friends of India, and all the distinguished members of the Indian American community. Each day, you have so much celebrate India's U.S. special ties and to all and to make this world a better place for one and all. Jai Janan, thank you very much. I am Amar Patnaik, Member of Parliament in the Upper House of Indian Parliament, representing a state called Odessa. I am extremely pleased to be connecting with you through the International Ahimsa Foundation for this function of Mahavir Jayanti. On this occasion, while remembering Mahavir, the Lord Mahavir, I would like to quote Mahatma Gandhi, who has been called the true preacher of Jainism, the religion that Mahavir propagated. I quote, I say with conviction that the doctrine for which the name of Lord Mahavir is glorified nowadays is the doctrine of Ahimsa. If anyone has practiced to the fullest extent and has propagated the most of the doctrine of Ahimsa, it was Lord Mahavira. So, in a sense, if Gandhi is considered as an apostle of nonviolence who got India independence by practicing this particular principle. It is actually Lord Mahavira from whom he drew inspiration. The world has seen that nonviolence or ahimsa can actually give results and it is India's independence is a true testimony of this particular principle having been practiced over a period of time by none else than the father of our nation Mahatma Gandhi. I have all my life seen that nonviolence is not really bloodshed, stopping bloodshed. Nonviolence is banishing thoughts that create violence of other kinds like socio, economic, and political in the minds of men. So it is we who have to change. It is we who have to make our minds change. We have to think differently. And the time has come to do it right now. I thank the International Ahimsa Foundation for taking this particular concept forward even during these times of war and turmoil. I wish them all success. I wish all of us success in changing our lives to practice Ahimsa in our daily lives. Consul General, we have now a special performance here this afternoon. The performance is called Meri Bhavna. It's been directed by Suki Pandey. Performers are Ishita Bansal, Mahir Kasliwal, Anusha Pandya, Sunil Ajmira, Hitasha Kasliwal, Vivan Pandya, Dr. Jio Levin. Please welcome on stage, Lady Bhatt. Today we are celebrating the values of the Thankar Mahavir. Five kids have prepared a beautiful poetry song for you from ancient Jain philosophy. It is known as My Musings. It is by Pandit Jugal Kishore Mukhtar. 
Today, the world is in a turmoil. Wherever we look, there is hatred, destruction, deaths, frank war. Millions of people are steeped into misery just for the sake of personal gratification based on sects, nations, dictators. This is the need of the time when through this particular song, these kids are going to relay messages of a lifestyle which is full of non-violence and ahimsa. Again, ahimsa in speech, in intentions, as well as in attitude. Welcome, Mary Bhavna. Thank you. 
second. I'd like to invite the Consul General on the stage to just give them some certificates of recognition for their beautiful work. All right, we have it for Maher Kastriwal. Anusha Pandya. Sunidhi Ashmira. Hitasha Kasiva. Devan Pandya. And Dr. Joel Levin. Psychologist by profession, he works with me. We all work together, and he came to perform just uh, in a night information. We called him yesterday, and he came and performed the tips. Thank you so much, John, for being here. Thank you. Thank you. And before we move on, I'd like to call on stage Assemblyman David Wepren. He's here with us today at this event. So let's have on stage. Assemblyman Wepren. Namaste. It's great to be here. Uh, I think um, I was at all ten of the uh, celebrations uh, that we've had uh, that uh, Dr. Nita Jane uh, put together uh, here at the, uh, at the embassy. It's great uh, to be back in person. I know we had a little um, absence for the last uh, couple of years, but uh, it's great to be back with so many of my friends uh, in the uh, Indian American community, and it's great to be with you, uh, Consul General. Uh, I've actually been here with many Consul Generals uh, over the years, but uh, you know they all do such a terrific job uh, representing uh, India uh, in the United States, and uh, of course, uh, we're here celebrating uh, Lord Mahavir's uh, birthday and um, the Ahimsa uh, Foundation, uh, who's uh, celebrating, you know, nonviolence, peace, uh, the traditions uh, of Mahatma Gandhi uh, that we uh, we all live by and are inspired by. And as uh, Dr. Jane correctly pointed out, uh, Mahatma Gandhi uh, inspired uh, Dr. Martin Luther King and, um, and, and all the uh, other nonviolent uh, leaders uh, that followed and uh, really uh, helped achieve uh, you know, world peace. Of course, we're all uh, in mourning from the uh, attack yesterday, the hate attack uh, against uh, African Americans in Buffalo. Uh, just yesterday, it's uh, almost when will the violence stop? You know, it's, if everybody followed, uh, you know, the teachings of uh, Lord Mahav Mahavir and Mahatma Gandhi, uh, we wouldn't have these uh, terrible incidents of uh, uh, gun violence and hate, motivated by hate. That's, that's the worst type uh, of gun violence. You know, one day, it's against one community, another day it's against another community, and it's so important that we all uh, speak out uh, loudly uh, whenever there's a hate against uh, one group. It's really a, a hate against all of us. So uh, again, uh, so happy to be here participating uh, in this very important function uh, here at the, at the embassy. Uh, congratulations.
Thank you so much, Assemblyman Weber and everyone. A one big round of applause, please. And before we move to the honoree speeches for this year, uh, we'd just like to recognize Congresswoman Carol Maloney, who was here when had to go to an event. She is a very, very, very busy woman, but we were very happy to see her support for the foundation and for the South Asian population in general. Moving on, we have now our first honoree for this afternoon, honoree Mr. Haridas Kotawala. Mr. Mr. Kotawala has received many accolades throughout his career. In 2001, Rana honored him for his social achievements. In 2004, he was honored by the World Business with Proclamations in New York State Assembly and U.S. Congress for his dedication to the community. In 2008, he received the Pioneer Award from IDCA for leading the Indian Jewelry community in the U.S. In 2011, the Indian Association of Long Island honored him with Lifetime Achievement Award for his social endeavor. His loving wife, Sharda, has always inspired him and has always stood by him at every step of the way to encourage him in all his social activities. Please welcome on the stage, Mr. Kotabala. I would like to invite our Council General on the stage, please, to bestow this honor on him. And uh, Auntie Shada, Auntie, please join Uncle on the stage. As Assembly Member David Weapon, please come. And I believe somebody, Rohan Narain, is from Mayor Eric Adams' office. Please come on the stage. got this latest edition of their award and we are the first one to use this. So Crown Trophy, we have to give a big round of applause and we have this unique presentation to our audience today. And we are also giving them non book on non-violence which is written by our none other than Professor Jeffrey Long. So give a round of applause to Professor Jeffrey Long. As well. And we also have a proclamation from Assemblyman David Vertrin. Uh, for uh, Mr. Haridas Kotawala. Thank you everyone for coming to the stage. Thank you. Thanks 
for inviting me and my family and this esteemed honor. We wish you every success in the world. Thank you very much. Moving on, we'd now like to have a performance by Angel Shah. She's only 11 years old from Rhythm Dance Academy and she's been with the International Mensa Foundation for a while. So let's welcome on the stage. We have with us Angel Shah.
and in heart itself. And this performance was especially dedicated to two different events combined in one. One is our 10th anniversary of International Ayesa Foundation and the nation's 75th anniversary of independence. So please give a big round of applause to our nation, India. And I would again request our Council General to come and give this certificate to Angel Shah, please. Thank you. And Surbhi Pandya, we are at the cards. Celebration for the night 
non-violence. As we all know, the whole world will be better off today in this difficult situation what we are going through right now. If we use the word non-violence for everybody, that's going to be delightful. I am also thankful to my wife who has promoted all my life to continue perform the best I can as well as the path of my after retirement she continued to support my activities for the international human benefit services. I am also very thankful to Dr. Neeta Jain for choosing the path of non-violence and promoting non-violence. It's a great honor for me to thank Dr. Neeta Jain and the organization what she is able to do in the last 10 years. Uh, without taking too much time, I again want to thank Council General and other people. Thank you very much. We also have a message from uh, New York City Mayor Eric Adam. Uh, I would request Rohan Narain to please come and read that message. afternoon and welcome to this very joyous celebration. Um, my name is Rohan Narayan. I am a liaison to Mayor Eric Adams. Um, and before I read from this award, uh, this award happens to be one of these, uh, bear with me, these, <laughs> these big proclamations because there are a number of anniversaries here. Um, I just want to say two quick things. One, to that young lady who danced. Uh, wow. So I, I mean, my blood pressure went up from watching that. Um, and two, one thing in, in the work I've done here at, at the mayor's office, I'm a big fan of intercultural dialogue. And there was a meeting uh, before COVID, and it was with the DOE, and it was about religiously accessible meals. And I met with the DOE and I said, we have to really be respective of the South Asian community, the Hindu community, the Jain community. Um, and the DOE representative said, you don't worry about that. We got that taken care of. Rohan, for your community, especially the Jain community, our meals are certified halal. <laughs> and I said, I said to him, I said, with all due respect, I think you got the religion wrong. <laughs> I think it's certified halal for followers of Islam. And there's, so I, I'm a huge fan, to sum up what I said there, I'm a huge fan of intercultural dialogue. I think even sometimes in the city, working in the city, um, we can tweak things and we should apologize when we make mistakes. Uh, but with that said, there is a lot to read from this proclamation. I'm not gonna read all of it, uh, there's, yeah, but I do want to read um, a very important piece here, uh, the first paragraph and the last paragraph. So just kindly bear with me. Um, I've learned to read these things pretty quickly. As a city built by immigrants, New York is a proud home to people of all backgrounds and beliefs. Today, I am pleased to join the Consulate General of India in New York and the International Ahimsa Foundation as they host a Mahavir Jayanti celebration to commemorate the 2,620th birth anniversary of Lord Mahavir, an important spiritual figure in the ancient Indian religion of Jainism. Whereas Indian Americans have long strengthened the five boroughs and they will continue to play a key role as we work together to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic as members of our thriving Jain, Hindu, and Indian American communities observe Mahavir Jayanti, I am pleased 
to recognize their invaluable contributions to the five boroughs, and to applaud everyone associated with the International Ahimsa Foundation and Dr. Jane. Um, a big round of applause for, for Dr. Jane. Um, and I'm, I'm going to embellish for five seconds. When, when, doc, when the pandemic hit and the city shut down and we went into DEF CON 5, uh, it, was, it was members of the community who said, you know, it's not about being a district leader, it's not about knowing elected officials, it's being on the ground, getting the job done, and Dr. Jane, you got it done. Um, in your next life, you know, you will be a dove, for sure. <laughs> and, and we really, really, on, the, on behalf of the city of New York, you know, we, we, we extend our salutations. I'll finish reading this here. I look forward to the many ways everyone gathered will further invigorate our global city as we work together to fight hate, intolerance, and crime that has been exacerbated by the pandemic, champion a culture of peace, and forge a safer, brighter, more prosperous future for all. Now, therefore, I, Eric Adams, Mayor of the City of New York, do hereby proclaim Sunday, May 15, 2022, in the City of New York as International Ahimsa Foundation Day. Congratulations. At this moment, we are going to break a little bit of our sequence, and I would like to invite our very dear friend, who is always with us, with our community. He is a very well face in my community, as, as I know him, and I know you will know soon who is that person. A very good friend of mine and counselor as well, Deputy Council General Israel Ninja from Israeli Council. Please come up and give a short uh, remark. from Queens, 
my very good friend, who is here. And he is also from JCRC. He is on board of JCRC, Trust Board member. Please welcome Shimi Thelman.
इस बचे हुए समय में क्षमा भाव को धारण करो मरण समय अहिंसा व्रत और शांत परिणाम रखने के कारण वो आत्मा के विकास की दिशा में चल पड़ा और आगे उसने राजा नंद की पर्याय में जन्म लिया मेरे पास सारी राज्य संपदा है और सारे सुख है और इनके होते हुए भी मुझे तृप्ति नहीं मिल रही नमस्तु महाराज सत्य क्या है मैं कौन हूं ये अतृप्ति क्यों आत्मा भी ध्यान रूपी तप की अग्नि में तपने से अपने शुद्ध रूप को प्राप्त कर लेती है ये शुद्ध स्वरूप ही आत्मा का वास्तविक सुख है आज मुझे जीवन का रहस्य समझ आ गया है सभी प्राणियों में एक जैसा ही जीव तत्व है मैं अभी से सृष्टि के समस्त प्राणियों के प्रति प्रेम धारण करता हूं सभी जीवों का कल्याण अब आगे चलकर वो धर्म चक्र को चलाने वाले और सभी प्राणियों को कल्याण का मार्ग दिखाने वाले तीर्थंकर महावीर की पर्याय में जन्म लेते हैं आइए राजकुमार वर्तमान समय आ गया है अब तुम विवाह योग्य हो गए माना मुझे और बंधनों में मत बांधो मैं आपको कल्याण की ओर बढ़ना चाहता हूं मुझे आज्ञा तो माना राजकुमार वर्धमान का यह कथन सर्वथा उचित है मोक्ष मार्ग ही मानव जीवन का मूल है आप इन्हें जिन दीक्षा देने के लिए आशीर्वाद दीजिए महाराज अब दसों दिशाएं ही आपके वस्त्र Good afternoon. Uh, 
Namaste, Shubh Mahadev Jayanti, and Jai uh, Jai uh, I'd like to see the rest of that movie, actually. Uh, that, that looks like a, a wonderful film that's been put together on the life of Lord Mahadev Jayanti. Uh, I would like to thank everyone here, uh, the Honorable Consul General, uh, the dignitaries who've come and made time for this event, uh, my fellow moderates, and all of you, uh, many uh, good friends uh, I see here. Uh, and uh, I, I'm profoundly grateful to be here and to be uh, honored today. Uh, so many of you are doing such important work. Uh, I just write books and talk. So uh, I'm uh, very grateful uh, to, uh, to be able to be here in your presence. Uh, I want to speak today, of course, on Ahimsa. That is what we are here to celebrate today. Uh, Ahimsa is often translated as nonviolence, but that English word nonviolence does not quite do justice to the depth of the concept of Ahimsa. Ahimsa is nonviolence in thought, word, and action toward all living beings. It's a positive desire to see all living beings thrive be happy. Ahimsa is the primordial ethical principle, the foundation on which all of morality is based. From the desire to see living beings thrive and be happy stems the responsibility to ensure that this desire is fulfilled and that in our personal conduct we refrain as much as humanly possible from causing harm to others. The foundational nature of Ahimsa as an ethical principle is expressed in the Sanskrit phrase, which uh, Nithaji also used in her remarks, Ahimsa Paramon Harmaha. Ahimsa is the supreme duty. It is also reflected in the fact that the Jain, Hindu, and Buddhist traditions all list Ahimsa first among the moral duties as having priority even over such central principles as truth or satya, or non-stealing, as they are. Ahimsa is foundational to all these other virtues. For if one does not wish to harm others, one will of course also not wish to lie to them or steal from them, and so on. Ahimsa is the original moral principle. Ahimsa is to be directed again to all living beings. It's not limited to our own family or our friends. It's not limited to the fellow adherents of our religion or our philosophy or our political views. It's not limited only to members of one's own ethnic group or nationality. It's not even limited to human beings. It is to be extended to all living beings. If our ahimsa is arbitrarily limited, if we love only those who are like us in some fashion, this is not true ahimsa. This is simply a sentiment and it stems from our attachment to, ultimately, to our own ego. This false ahimsa is really an extension of egotism. It's something we need to overcome and replace with true ahimsa. The roots of true ahimsa are in the very nature of existence. This is expressed in many ways by the great <coughs> spiritual traditions of the world. For the Jan tradition, it is expressed in terms of the empathy we feel for other souls, other jivas, other living beings. All jivas have the same basic essence and are thus worthy of the same consideration. Our own desire to live and thrive and be free from harm thus naturally extends to all other beings of the same kind and is only blocked by the artificial barrier of the ego that cares ultimately only for its own self-preservation. In the Hindu tradition, this ideal is expressed in the fundamental oneness of all existence. Empathy and love are what we feel when we sense that basic oneness that connects us all. In the Buddhist tradition, the basis of Ahimsa is expressed as the interconnectedness of all beings. The late Master Thich Nhat Hanh coined the beautiful term interbeing to express the way in which we all exist in relation to others. We are what we are by virtue of our connectedness and our relatedness to other beings. In the Abrahamic traditions, the foundation of nonviolence is the sanctity of life, which is the gift of a good and loving God, and which no one else can rightfully take away. In all these diverse traditions, when we harm others, even in our thoughts, we're really harming ourselves. 
The golden rule to treat others as we ourselves wish to be treated is the essence of ahimsa, the basis of all moral action, and some version of it can be found in every one of the world's great traditions. I'd like to conclude uh, with the Sanskrit invocation, uh, keeping in mind especially all the victims of violence, all the people who are suffering, uh, all the other living beings who are suffering in the world. Uh, this invocation beautifully captures, I think, the spirit of Ahimsa, which we're celebrating today. Sarve bhavantu sukhinaha, sarve santu niramayaha, sarve dhani vashantu, ma kashchit dukha kade, om shanti 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 dihi. translation, may all be happy, may all be well, may all see what is good, and may no one experience misery. Peace, peace, peace to all beings. How inspiring. Well, now we are graced with a huge representative of the Abbey community here from New York. We're joined by U.S. Congresswoman Grace Meng. She is serving her fifth term in the United States House of Representatives. She represents the 6th Congressional District of New York, encompassing the New York City boroughs of Queens, including West, Central, and Northeast Queens. Congresswoman Meng is the first and only Asian American member of the Congress from New York State, and the first female Congress member from Queens since former Vice Presidential nominee Geraldine Ferrero. Congresswoman Grace Meng is a member of the powerful House Appropriations Committee and is the Vice Chair for the Subcommittee on State and Foreign Operations. She's also sitting on the Appropriations Subcommittee on Agriculture and the Subcommittee on Commerce, Justice, Science, and Related Agencies. The Appropriations Committee is responsible for funding every federal agency, program, and project within the United States government. Please help me welcome on the stage U.S. Congresswoman Grace Meng. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Congresswoman Grace Meng, and it's such an honor to be here with all of you, to our Council General uh, Jais Wall, uh, and to so many friends from throughout uh, the Queens and New York City, Indian American community, and beyond. I want to say a special thank you to uh, my, one of my district leaders, uh, Nita Jane, Dr. Jane. It is a testament to Dr. Jane how we see such a diverse uh, coalition of people here today from our Jewish community to Council General Mitsan and to uh, another one of our esteemed district leaders and my friend Jimmy Pellman and so many. And as we gather today, today is especially meaningful and especially important for all of us to be here together. Uh, I want to express my condolences to the 27 um, a, a, a number of Indians who uh, perished uh, from a fire, I think last night, a few hours ago, and our hearts and prayers go out to uh, their, their families. Um, and I also want to express uh, condolences and we can remain, remain um, watchful about the situation uh, in our own home state of, of Buffalo, uh, New York, uh, where there was uh, a massacre, pretty much, um, by an 18-year-old. And so what we are hearing in the news and the constant display of violence, uh, growing racism from anti-Semitism to anti-Asian, uh, hate uh, is something that our communities will not stand for and that's why it's so important for us to stand together and I'm grateful to be here with all of you because there is no time more important than now for us to stand together our diverse communities stand together against hate if there's discrimination against one community we must speak out because today will be one community and tomorrow it could be another um, and so I'm really grateful to be here today. I'm proud to represent a district in parts of Queens, New York. Uh, I hope it won't stay that way. We'll find out this week. Um, but either way, I am here for you. I look forward to continuing our work together. The past few years as we come out of the pandemic has been really difficult reading about so many issues and how people have suffered uh, and how violence and extremism has increased. 
But one of the good things I, I will say is that we have seen different coalitions being built and expanded, uh, and it's, it's important that we strengthen these partnerships as we combat hate and, and discrimination, because that's really how we're going to make progress, um, by, by working together. So thank you so much. It is really a distinguished honor to have my good friend, Congresswoman Grace Mann, with us today, despite of a very tight schedule. As we all know that today, we had a first Asian cultural parade in New York City. So they have so many events uh, everywhere, and she was very busy, but she promised, and she is here, she keeps her promise. So please, I would like to invite uh, Council General, uh, BCD, uh, Lisa, and and all three of the parties to take a good picture with Congressman and Basement. And we are going to give you a small token of appreciation. This is a book on nonviolence and a book. Them a huge round of applause, everyone. And at this point, I would like to invite a dead, very dear friend of ours and who always believe in nonviolence. And you all know him, Dr. Sudhir Pare. He is the Padmashree Dr. Sudhir Pare, CEO of Pare Media and ITV Gold for a short remark. Thank you, Nitaji. His Excellency Randeji Keshwal. Congresswoman Grace, Mr. Long, Mr. David, uh, and dear friends. Well, uh, to, uh, to start with, I would like to uh, thank uh, Dr. Nita, Nita Jain and the uh, Ahinsa Foundation for inviting me. It's a really a great Thing uh, that 599 BC, a person who born 2600 years ago, has given the message, which is still it is true for today's day, that unbelievable. And his message after 12 years of his tapasya is very simple: do not harm plants, do not harm animals, and do not harm human beings. And look at this thing, do not harm plants, that uses message for our environmental control, uh, green, green, uh, green posture of the world. Do not harm animals, that gives you a great excuse to be healthy and be vegetarian. And do not harm human beings, because we all know, we always, always respect others as you expect from others. And that's the only way you can get uh, grow together and make a big difference. And this message gave us freedom in 1947 uh, because of Mahatma Gandhi's uh, non-violence movement. This message gave us freedom from the slavery to the black Americans and all the rights to the black Americans, equal rights of, to the black Americans by Martin Luther King. And this is the same message gave, uh, gave South African a freedom from the apartheid. And that shows that this message has a lot of value, a lot of power. And this message can lead to a, 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 a stoppage of the 
the Russia-Ukraine war and the peace in the world. So let's hope for that. And uh, Dr. Nidal, uh, pro, uh, and on behalf of uh, Parikh Valbhan Media, ITV Gold, which is my philanthropic activities. I'm a medical doctor, but uh, this is my philanthropic activity, which I enjoy. You can always count on us, and you can always count on me personally. And Jai Jalendra, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Fare. We are now moving towards the closer end of this event. Right now, we have Peace Meditation by Sister Sabrina Deer. Sister Sabrina Deer is currently the NGO representative of the Brahm Kumaris to the UN. The work of the Brahm Kumaris is based on the understanding that there is a connection among awareness. Sabrina has connected courses, facilitated workshops, and retreats in the Caribbean, UK, India, Middle East, and many states across the U.S. She has been a representative for the Brahma Kumaris in the U.S. for the last 22 years. Using peace-building methods in 110 countries, the Brahma Kumaris supports United Nations 2030 Agenda and the SDGs. Please welcome on the stage we have with us Sister Sabita Gere. Watch your breath in and out. And gradually bring our attention to this present moment. And I gradually turn my thoughts inward and concentrate. And the Jivatma, the soul, in the center of the forehead. As my thoughts become slow, and I'm focused on my inner light, I remind myself. Is my innate nature. Peace is my true dharma, my true religion. I am at peace only when I follow the principles of Ahimsa. you to 
together with the divine, the source of peace. Together, we turn our attention to a place that needs this energy, this frequency, whether it's in Ukraine, whether it's in India, whether it's right here in the U.S., maybe your community. Let's turn, choose one place, bring that place in the eye of your mind and share the base of peace. Share with the world. Breath in again and release. Turn to the person next to you. Because we can't be in peace if we can't be at peace with the person next to us. So turn to the person next to you and greet them in peace. wonderful opportunity and my dear sister Dr. Nita and all my friends here this afternoon. There are too many of you for me to call names. Thank you all very much. Well, as I said earlier, we are coming to a close of the event. I have now the honor of inviting Mr. Rajiv Pandya to the stage for a vote of thanks. He is the partner at Ashi Diamonds and Avalon Solution. He is the president of Indian Diamond and Color Stones Association, also the chairperson for Jita US in New York. He was the past Northeast Vice President for JANA and chairperson for JANA Calendar Committee. He's also on the board of the International Hymns Foundation. Please welcome on the stage, Mr. Bandia. Uh, Jay Jandra, and namaste, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, I would like to thank, on behalf of the International Hymns Foundation, the Council Journal of India, Randeep Jaswal, for hosting all of us in this beautiful facility, along with all the council and staff and the volunteers. I'd also like to say thank MC and Viti Lamba and all our sponsors from the Souvenir and all the press and media for the support. Uh, some of the volunteers I'd like to read out, uh, Surbhi Pandya, Dr. Joel Lavie, Angela Teddy, Diana Teddy, Puram Shah, Shilpa Mikhaiwala, Michelle Delafe, Dr. Jyotsna Jay, Dr. Smita Goa, Sister Sabita Gir, Namisha Jain, Anubhav Jain, Anika Jain, Addy, Anya Jain, Shristi Jain, Satish Kumar, Rina Jain, and all the uh, board members of IAF. Special thanks to Harindashti Kotawala, Uncle for the souvenir, beautiful souvenir book that you see. And especially thank you to all the honorees and to all the guests that attended today's event. And of course, our president of IAF, uh, Dr. Lisa J. Without whom this event would not be possible. And uh, you will, as you enjoy the beautiful snacks in the morning, uh, we will also have lunch. We have a small uh, dance uh, performance after this. And then we'll go downstairs and proceed for lunch. Thank you. Uh, good food. Thank you. Huge round of applause for the entire team of the International Hymns Foundation. Wonderful event. 
And you got the class and you're celebrating an amazing audience. Well, we are coming to the conclusion of this event, but we have an amazing performance waiting just to happen. We have today the performance from Rhythm Dance Academy on the song Dolita. It's been directed by Shilpa Mithaiwala. The performers are Isha Bhutani, Saira Chabria, Malika Mehta, Sanvi Sharma, Nishi Shet, Angel Shah. Please welcome on stage all these beautiful girls. We're so excited to see you. Thank you. 
they want to join, please come up on this stage to go have a group picture. Thank you so much once again for your tremendous support. All the sponsors, you always give us the motivation to do our job in right way for our community, to make this world a better place to live for everyone. Thank you once again.